pipe is traditionally used in more of an industrial setting. You will find this in the residential applications if you're working with gas um, or other things like that. But frequently black iron pipe is used in more of an industrial setting as it is super strong. Um, so if you're going through exposed settings with the wall open or anything like that, it is a stronger material versus some of our softer plumbing uh, fixtures like PEX or copper. Some basics of black iron pipe. Basically, black iron pipe is utilizing national pipe thread or NPT, how it's referred in the industry. It's nothing more than a tapered threaded connection. So these threads are tapered. They get wider as they come down here. So as we thread our fittings onto the pipe thread, the, t the further we go, the further we tighten this, the tighter this joint will become. Now, when we look at that, that is truly what is sealing this connection are the threads themselves. We will also investigate a little deeper in the video how we can utilize either Teflon tape or pipe dope or combination of both to seal those threads. But the threads themselves are doing the actual work. So when we purchase either fittings or pipe, oftentimes you are buying the fittings and you are buying what we call nipples. The nipples are short sections that are already pre-threaded on both sides and come in a variety of different lengths. Oftentimes it is easier to just purchase these versus making these yourself. You can make these yourself if you want to thread these. Um, however, oftentimes it's easier just to purchase the specific length as they are fairly cheap. So in our case, we have these pre-purchased. So we have 12 inch nipples, three inch nipples, and then a variety of different fittings. So we'll have 90s or 90 degree elbows. We'll have T's or you know, these cross T's here. We'll have um, couplings. And then we also have some unions that we'll utilize to make multiple connections um, as you'll see on our sample board here. Some safety associated with working with black iron pipe. Um, first of all, you always want to wear Z871 safety glasses. It's best practice, um, especially if you are working overhead. So a lot of times this is done in an industrial setting or even in a residential setting where the pipe itself may be overhead. As you're threading that pipe, you don't want a piece of metal to flake off this pipe and come into your eyes. So best practice is wearing these safety glasses. You'll also see I prefer to wear gloves while working with this. Um, when we get brand new pipes in, oftentimes they have an oily residue on them, which can really make your hands dark, stained. Um, that's just a cleanly thing, but that is totally up to uh, preference. The threads themselves can be sharp. So it's, it's another advantage of wearing the gloves is they can protect your hands from these sharp threads. Um, also want to look at your tools. When we are working with these tools, which we'll cover in a second, there's a variety of different tools we can use while working with black iron pipe. A lot of these tools have pinch points in them. So you want to make sure your fingers are not getting involved in these pinch points, as well as if you are working on a uh, pipe vise, making sure that you don't get involved in any of these specific pinch points, which is just basic hand tool safety. Some of the common tools that are going to be associated with working with black iron pipe, threaded pipe, or um, NPT fittings are pipe wrenches. Pipe wrenches are going to come in a variety of different lengths. So whether it's a 24 cast iron pipe wrench, super heavy, they go up to 48, 64, even bigger. Or you're at a little 14 aluminum cast aluminum pipe wrench, which is a lot easier to handle. So we have the pipe wrenches. We have adjustable pliers or channel locks. Um, these come in a variety of different lengths. These often are going to be used for your smaller diameter pipes. So if you're working with half inch pipe, three quarter pipe, something like that, oftentimes you'll be using channel locks like this and maybe working up into a small pipe wrench. Um, the larger pipe wrenches are going to be for your larger diameter pipe. So when you start tapping one inch, two inch, three inch, so on and so forth. And then you're going to want an adjustable wrench as well. So the adjustable wrench a lot of times could be used for um, certain fittings that have square edges on them. If you're installing a um, pressure gauge or something along those lines, you may want to use a adjustable or an adjustable wrench. You're also going to want to have some type of thread sealing that we talked about. So in our particular case, we are going to be using uh, Teflon tape or PTFE thread tape. Okay. Um, Oftentimes when I'm installing this for a permanent application, we will use thread sealant, thread tape, as well as pipe dope, all right, combination of the both. 
However, for our case, we are just doing a temporary install. We're going to be taking this apart again. So we'll just be simply using some um, Blue Monster thread tape here. We are fortunate enough to be using um, this pipe vise here because what we're doing is just some bench fitting. So we're not up in the ceiling doing this or um, in the field. So the advantage of the pipe vise is there's no need for a backup wrench. So when you're actually tightening these fittings, the vise itself is going to hold the nipple or whatever you're clamped to, so you don't have to have a backup wrench. So to use this, we're basically going to bring this chain over, make sure it engages on the backside, and then simply snug that chain up. And what that's doing is holding this nipple in place so that I can thread my fittings on without having to have the support of a back wrench here. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and make a connection. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the cover off of our um, thread tape here. And we're going to come on the bottom side and we're gonna stay about a thread back from the front face here. And we're going to start wrapping around this thread. Now, you wanna make around four or five, let's shoot for five, three, four, five complete rotations around there to make sure that we are sealing this thread. You'll also notice that I started at the bottom and worked my way around in this direction. That is so when I apply my fitting, the fitting works to actually tighten that and not loosen that thread tape. Otherwise, sometimes you'll be loosening this and it'll actually undo the thread tape, okay? We can then just hand tighten this fitting. Um, get that started. And at that point, you can either choose your tool, which is best associated with grabbing this. So whether you want to start with a small pipe wrench or you want to start with a larger set of channel locks, we're going to grab this section here of this fitting. So we'll adjust these channel locks as need be. So we can grab this and we're going to rotate this. All right. It's as simple as that. The advantage that we have of this vise right here, as we talked about, is I don't need to have an additional hand supporting this pipe. So the vise is doing the work to support that pipe. Now, oftentimes people ask, how do I know when it's too tight? Can I make it too tight? Yes, you can make it too tight. You can actually stretch those threads. If I put a 24 inch pipe wrench on this, it's going to be super easy to turn, right? So you could probably turn this thing forever right now, but you could make this so tight that it would actually stretch those threads. So how tight do we make it? Well, it's good to leave a couple threads exposed, right? So we're gonna keep turning this until we have a couple threads exposed. And it also becomes a feel thing. The further you work with this, you could say, all right, that's snug down pretty good, right? Another thing to consider is position. So what do I mean by position? Well, a lot of times when we're making these connections, we need to have this plumb to something down here. So if I were installing another fitting, I would have to plumb this up with use of a little torpedo level, a little pocket level. So I could plumb this up to make sure this is vertical and then plumb this fitting up. So to plumb this up, we can either apply our level and make sure that this face is level and we would adjust this pipe until that face is level, re-snugging this down, or we could apply what is called a little gunner pipe. And the gunner pipe is going to be a pipe that would run vertical that would allow us to apply a level to the face of this to make sure it was plumb so that we could make sure that this fitting is corresponding to this fitting. So if I were going to apply a T here and I needed to make sure that face was up, same thing, start with my Teflon, make sure it's not wrapped over itself. We'll skip a thread, start back here. Get our five wraps. Start threading our fitting. Make sure this is tight so it doesn't move. We would check this for plumb down here in the bottom bubble. Good. 
and we could apply this fitting the same way we did the last, simply getting this spun on, going round and round until we get to those couple threads. But sometimes with fittings like this where they need to be positioned correctly, you could say, oh, that's pretty good there, that's pretty tight. But we need to go a step further to make sure that this face corresponds with this face. So once again, you could use the same methodology where if this is level, this face right here should also be level. So you can see I'm out of level and I would just take this a little further until that is level as well. That would show me this face and this face are good. Prior to making this connection, you want to investigate or take a look at the thread itself. You want to make sure the threads are all in good shape, that the threads haven't skipped a couple, any threads that are broken off or anything along those lines. If you're also threading this pipe yourself, you want to make sure you have a nice good thread that's long enough, it's not too short, and it's not crazy long, right? So you're looking to make sure you have an appropriate thread which could be covered in a separate video for threading. Um, even when you buy these fittings or these nipples, Sometimes, depending on where you're buying them and who manufactured them, these threads themselves can be kind of messed up. So you just want to make sure those are nice, clean threads prior to making a permanent connection. Black iron pipe has been around for a long, long time. It has proven itself over the years to be a very, very stable and successful means of carrying fluids, gas, steam, so on and so forth. Hopefully throughout this video, you picked up a couple tips and tricks you can use when making these connections. As always, remember safe operation is the number one goal, making sure you're following all your PPE and safe practices while working with black iron pipe. Thanks everybody.